Luis uh, for inviting me here today. Uh, Ways of Carnegie and on the State University of Athens. Uh, it's a great, great, great pleasure and uh, I would say an honor uh, to, to be here in Athens and to, uh, to talk about the ancient Greek law here in, uh, in Athens. It's a great, great pleasure. Um, first of all, I would refer to uh, what Professor Kudalakis uh, and also Professor Kulidis uh, said before uh, about the importance uh, of uh, classical studies for Greece and for Europe. I think this is a, a topic uh, which should be uh, further developed in, uh, in many places. Uh, and uh, I'm convinced that uh, uh, it is something on uh, which we will have to concentrate uh, a lot in the future, and on which Europe, uh, which Europe uh, and not only Greece, uh, should, should concentrate. The, the importance of the legacies that uh, Greece uh, got from the past and that Europe uh, got from uh, Greece, Professor uh, Kitovina said, uh, without ancient Greece, uh, there will be no Europe and there will be no humanity. I think this is a point which should be highlighted and stressed uh, much more. Uh, it is probably uh, not a case uh, that, uh, uh, and even if it may sound probably uh, paradoxical, uh, that China decided in the, in the past years to send uh, uh, researchers to Italy uh, in order to study uh, Roman law and in order to study how problems were uh, approached and developed in, uh, in that legal system. I say it is not paradoxical because probably uh, China uh, understood quite well that without going back to the past it is not possible to develop uh, a legal system in in their case, in the case of China, a legal system which can be, uh, which can adapt to the, the economic development. And uh, I say it's quite paradoxical because it's, uh, it can sound quite strange that uh, China has this knowledge and this understanding of the past, of the past that while well, sometimes here in Europe we tend to, uh, to forget this kind of uh, uh, perspective. Um, and I would add that, uh, well, I participated in a, in a conference in China uh, three years ago in Beijing uh, and I tried to uh, explain that uh, not only Roman law but probably even Greek, ancient Greek law uh, could be interesting for, for the Chinese because we can find uh, even in Greek law some principles and some ideas not only in those relating to uh, constitutional law uh, but also other concepts uh, pertaining to private law which may be extremely interesting uh, in the development of a uh, 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 modern legal system. So, um, that ha having been said, um, I was asked to uh, talk a little bit uh, about the relationship uh, between law and political theory in, uh, in ancient Greece. Uh, and I would say that this is a, a quite complex and a, a difficult topic for a number of reasons. Uh, the first reason, I think, is that uh, the two concepts of law and political theory uh, melt somehow into, into one another. Uh, because Greek law, uh, ancient Greek law, concerns a number of aspects that uh, clearly fall, as I said, not only within what we would now, now call uh, private law, but also uh, within what we would call constitutional law, which is quite difficult to separate sometimes from political theory. Uh, I think the concept uh, of uh, politia, or uh, I will pronounce it politeia because uh, uh, we study ancient Greek in Italy and we pronounce it, we try to pronounce it uh, the so called Erasmian way. So uh, sorry for uh, <laughs> pronouncing it this way in Greece, but uh, obviously it is the way I, I learned in Greek, and uh, we tend to think that it is probably the way the ancient Greeks uh, spoke. But I don't want to insist on this, uh, on 
it's not uh, I'm, I was saying that the, the concept of uh, politeia or politia uh, is probably uh, significant in, uh, in, this, in this respect. In fact, uh, on, on the one side, uh, uh, it is true that uh, politeia uh, could be intended as uh, somehow the order of the bodies. It means uh, as the uh, the whole uh, normoi which uh, were uh, valid and which related to a set of uh, rules according to which uh, one one part uh, of the of the bodies uh, could administer the uh, law and uh, according to which all the competencies uh, were distributed. Uh, but at the same time, uh, as has been uh, highlighted and uh, stressed by uh, many uh, political theorists, uh, the concept of uh, politia, uh, even according to Aristotle, uh, includes not only the constitution, uh, if we can talk of constitution, but I would use this uh, English word, uh, not only uh, the constitution intended as the legal arrangement of governmental institutions, but also somehow uh, ideology, being the constitution, being the politia or politeia, the particular way of life of the polis, and also Professor Valiano uh, spoke before about the different kinds of uh, constitutions and the democracy and other kinds of constitutions. So uh, this probably this consider that uh, this uh, concept of constitution included uh, the ideological uh, part, an ideological part, uh, in this sense it's not easy to say that uh, law and political theory could be clearly uh, separated. And, well, uh, it emerges uh, on the other side that there was a very strong system of reciprocal influences uh, between these two, uh, these two kinds of uh, aspects of the, of the legal and philosophical or political ancient uh, world. And not only the concept of the constitution is relevant in this regard, but also the concept of rule of law about this, uh, this particular concept before uh, Professor Ibrahim uh, spoke about the uh, supremacy of, uh, of law in Estados. Uh, and also Professor Valiano uh, talked about the concept of uh, economia. Uh, and also, uh, this is a concept which is very controversial at the moment, uh, and which is uh, also very significant, I would say, uh, if, we, if we consider it uh, relating to Chinese world, for example, uh, if we attend the, the, the concept of uh, rule, uh, rule of law as a, in the traditional way, as the fact of political power uh, may not be exercised uh, except according to some specific procedures and constraints uh, which are prescribed by laws which are publicly known. And uh, as I said, it is a uh, uh, Problem which is now uh, very actual and very relevant in the, in the Chinese world, for example, but it shows that uh, if we intend the, the, the question of rule of law uh, as a component of constitutionalism, it is very difficult to, to separate this concept from the area of political theory. And the second uh, consideration why it is quite complex to talk about the influence of uh, law uh, on political theory uh, is the fact that uh, our knowledge of ancient Greek law is, is somehow limited. If we compare our knowledge of uh, ancient Greek law to the knowledge we have of uh, Roman law, for example, it clearly emerged that we, we have almost no knowledge. Uh, we, we know the existence uh, of, of some uh, rules, of some laws, uh, just because they are maybe incidentally uh, cited uh, in uh, uh, durations, uh, and also the, the precise uh, content of these law, of these laws is sometimes uh, quite uh, quite obscure. Uh, furthermore, we uh, we know Greek democracy uh, more from the point of view of political theory. Uh, than for the, from the point of view of uh, uh, 
strict perspective of constitutional law, if we intend this perspective in a, in a very technical uh, way. So, uh, obviously, even before Plato, uh, uh, legal uh, thought uh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly existed uh, in the sense of thinking about, uh, about law. We can, we can make the example of commerce, for example, uh, we talked before also about the so-called Homeric uh, process, which is a part of the description uh, of the shield of Achilles, which is extremely important uh, also for uh, a number of connections that can be can be made uh, from the scene which is depicted on the scenes which are depicted on the, on the shield and other aspects of political theory and ancient uh, uh, Greek history and it, it's also the, the, the so-called uh, uh, process that is also quite controversial because uh, there is also this uh, figure of the history which is, uh, uh, ha has been interpreted in many different ways and has been interpreted as an arbitrator or as a person who had different uh, functions. Uh, so it's, uh, it's extremely important uh, uh, also this, uh, this aspect. Uh, and thirdly, uh, another problem uh, consists in the fact that uh, our knowledge of Greek law, ancient Greek law, uh, comes from not only from epigraphy uh, uh, and from the uh, rhetoric, uh, but also from the same political thinking. So, uh, for example, even from uh, Aristotle, uh, which, which uh, lets us reconstruct some some traits of the of the, of the law. So. Uh, in this light, it's, it's quite difficult to separate these two, uh, these two aspects. And the last uh, thing is that sometimes it's even difficult to talk about Greek law. In Italy, uh, there are some universities where ancient Greek law is taught uh, and the subject is called uh, ancient Greek law. But in some other universities, uh, it is called uh, ancient Greek ancient Greek legal systems because obviously the problem is that it's, it's somehow difficult to, to say that there was just one ancient Greek law. Uh, it was a, Greece was a sort of pluralistic uh, world where there were different systems of law. But however, I tend to think that the, the principle of unity which connected uh, all of these systems lets us uh, speak about, uh, talk about uh, ancient Greek law. And I think this is the, uh, the, the most common tendency, not only in Italy at the moment, but also in the, in the Anglo Saxon uh, the world. So, to uh, just few ideas on uh, uh, that having been said, I mean, uh, with all these uh, uh, things that I said before. Um, we can say that uh, uh, Plato is a, a very uh, interesting uh, example of the relationship between law and political theory. Uh, many uh, scholars have underlined the fact that uh, law played uh, somehow a central uh, role in Plato's uh, because his, uh, his ideas on uh, both of law and also on legislation Institution, uh, on citizenship, uh, on civic, obliga civic obligation, on education, uh, they inspire uh, the laws, Plato's laws, uh, as well as most of his other writings. Uh, and I would concentrate uh, on the concept of legislation uh, also because uh, we, we should not forget that uh, Plato had been asked even to be a legislator. He refused this role, but uh, he had been asked to be a legislator for uh, Cyrene and also for, for Megalopolis. Uh, and in expressing, anyway, in expressing his ideas, uh, Plato uh, uses some terms and uh, uh, some phrases which can, be, which can be even found on the legal descriptions uh, and also in the orators. And it showed, showed that he had a profound knowledge of ancient uh, Greek law. In this respect, uh, not only what we, we could call Athenian law is important, but also uh, other laws, in particular the Cretan law, I would say. Uh, Plato's uh, laws uh, 
have been described uh, sometimes uh, as a sort of collection of uh, uh, different aspects of, uh, of ancient Greek uh, law. But as some of the scholars have underlined, uh, I refer in particular to my old professor, uh, Matthew of Milan. As some scholars have underlined, uh, the law, uh, there are many similarities in, uh, or better said, in many connections between the law. Plato's laws uh, and the law of uh, Gortine. The law of Gortine, as you probably know, is one of the <laughs> most important uh, sets of law we have from uh, ancient Greek. It is, uh, we should say, the only detailed source for the law of uh, an individual Greek policy. And I'm also very proud to uh, come from the same town from where Professor Federico Halpe uh, came Valeretto in. Uh, which, who was the discoverer of the great inscription uh, in Turkey. And uh, as Mafi said, there are many similarities uh, uh, among the, uh, the principles, uh, some principles at least, that we can find in the, in the great inscription of Turkey and some principles uh, that uh, Plato develops in the, in the laws. Uh, it, is, it must be underlined in this regard that Plato uh, in, the, in his laws, he, he often goes down from the from a higher level of uh, ethical political principles uh, to the level of uh, legislation itself, uh, and he demonstrates in this, uh, as I said before, a profound knowledge uh, not only uh, of uh, the juridical or legal terminology, but also uh, a great capacity of a sort of uh, uh, legislative bricolage and uh, uh, there are many institutes uh, which uh, uh, are common to the different uh, uh, ancient Greek systems uh, which Plato uses uh, and which Plato shows to know uh, very well. And with particular reference to uh, Gortin, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh, Mathi examines many uh, different aspects of the Gordian law, which are uh, almost exactly uh, reported in uh, Plato's, uh, Plato's uh, law. Uh, there are three main uh, aspects connected uh, to specific legal uh, problems that uh, we have the time to examine. But anyway, the, the, my idea, and it's not only my idea, is that there is a, str a strong connection and a strong influence uh, of uh, ancient people uh, to political theory in uh, in this in this respect. Uh, a second a second uh, aspect which which uh, confirms this uh, this view uh, relates to Aristotle uh, and it's uh, his idea of citizenship. We already talked before about the. Uh, and we will talk uh, uh, afterwards uh, uh, on this uh, particular aspect, so I don't want to, uh, to talk too much. But anyway, uh, the, one of the uh, broadest uh, uh, interpretation of the uh, concept of uh, citizenship, now I'm reading from uh, an article, uh, it's uh, uh, the fact that the, the citizen should, be, should show an active participation in the and this um, idea is particularly uh, important uh, in uh, my view uh, because it is it is the same uh, Aristotle in the politics uh, he finds uh, uh, the land at some point uh, also as a country even if uh, uh, possessed uh, in, a, in a larger share that uh, by the rich as a sort of common and in this sense, this reference of Plato of uh, Aristotle uh, does not seem casual. If we just think that, uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, if we just interpret this reference in the sense that juridically, in the perspective, in the psychological perspective, and even in the legal perspective of the ancient uh, Athenians, uh, the civic hora belongs somehow to the community of the citizens. And because only the citizens uh, have the ownership of the uh, land. Uh, and this will 
means that the only still uh, owner of uh, the land uh, could be mean somehow to be an active uh, citizen. I know that this concept is uh, can in some way controversial, uh, and it is maybe also because there was no specific uh, law which prescribed uh, this, and it was there was a, a, a law proposal which was rejected in the sense of the end of the century. But uh, after, after all, I think that uh, I found many many scholars who support uh, this view. So this connection between uh, the aspect of ownership of land and the aspect of active citizenship was very important. Also from the point of view of the civic religious heroes, uh, clearly being uh, an owner of uh, Athenian land uh, permitted to be part of a system of a police uh, which consisted also in uh, a number of religious uh, activities which only citizens so there was a, st a strong connection uh, among these three uh, fields uh, of citizenship, of ownership of land uh, and of religion. But maybe if we would talk about more uh, on, on, these, on these aspects. Uh, last, lastly, I, I, I wanted to uh, underline also the fact that uh, apart from these two uh, aspect concerning uh, Plato and also uh, Aristotle. Uh, also for the city this of uh, uh, which we spoke before a few while after it uh, is uh, can can show that uh, the, the relationship between uh, law and political theory was very very strong. Uh, I spoke before of the question of the history in uh, on the shield of Achilles and uh, the history which uh, has been interpreted as I said before many times uh, as a sort of arbitrator. Uh, this is why arbitration in ancient uh, uh, Greece and in the field uh, of a bigger uh, topic uh, of international relations, relations among uh, the different Greek polis uh, was extremely uh, important. The Greek polis had developed uh, a, a sort of system of judicial and uh, these inter-police relationships were uh, somehow formalized and uh, institutionalized. And uh, for it, it is for exactly for this reason that sometimes uh, we talk about a sort of international law uh, in uh, the ancient uh, world. Uh, and you see this in the history of the Peloponnesian war, uh, war uh, he shows himself as the first theorist of international relations, relations of the previous before, uh, and showed himself also as a, as a great knower uh, of how arbitration processes uh, work and uh, on a uh, knower of how arbitration could uh, help the police to, uh, to solve their, their controversies. And in the, the, the perspective of the theory and the perspective of international relations, I think uh, it, it's pretty, it's pretty important. Uh, as I said, uh, there was a discussed uh, attitude of the Greeks to the substantial recourse uh, practices of uh, arbitration, uh, which was intended as a sort of separate and uh, distinct uh, form of uh, dispute resolution uh, compared to the uh, court system.
citizenship. But, but anyway, uh, even, uh, even if it's difficult sometimes, uh, as I said before, to separate these two aspects, uh, I think that the study of the ancient uh, Greek law may be extremely uh, relevant for the study of uh, ancient political theory, but also, as I said before, for the study of modern political theory. Uh, I explained that the Chinese are trying to go back to our European roots to uh, further develop their role. 